Welcome to the Breakthrough Advisor Podcast. In this podcast, we inspire advisors with ideas and pathways to break through barriers and build a thriving retirement income business. We will interview innovative technology developers, business leaders, and successful advisors, then help you organize and execute these ideas to move your business forward. Hello and welcome to The Breakthrough Advisor. I'm your host, Eric Johnson, and today I am speaking with Julie Littlechild. She's the founder and CEO of Absolute Engagement, and boy, this is going to be fun today. Julie, how are you today? I am awesome. Thanks, Eric. So happy to be here. Yeah, I'm, I'm so happy you're here. I know that just the overall theme of what you're speaking about today is how to develop your client experience comeback plan. And I love that title because <laughs> I, I, I love working with advisors and talking to advisors about client experience, what they're doing. And there is a huge variety of what they do, uh, some good and some really bad. So <laughs> I, I love the fact that you're tackling this subject. Why did you choose this as a subject for today's podcast? As you know, from the work you do, client experience has always been important. I mean, it's just something that we need to look at, we need to get better at. But I do think that our, our collective experience over the last year has just heightened this need for us to say, not just what does it mean to deliver a great client experience, but how has it changed and how do we need to evolve that going forward? So, you know, it's just a, a big, important topic for us right now. Yeah, absolutely. And, and speaking of changing, obviously, 2020 had huge effects on the client experience. Yeah. What kind of changes are you seeing because of what advisors have gone through and, and their clients have gone through? I've been thinking a lot about how it's changed. And and there's really, there's almost two answers to that. One is we can talk and, and I think we will talk about some of the specific changes that we see, you mm -hmm. know, the need maybe for more contact and that sort of thing. But when I try to strip it back to its essentials, I think the, the one thing that is driving all of this change is just an acknowledgement that our clients' needs and expectations are fluid, right? Mm -hmm. that, that in the past, we could get away with asking our clients if they're satisfied with you know, our client experience and the frequency of contact because we thought those needs were somewhat static. But but gosh, you know, like emotions have been on such a roller coaster, mm -hmm. our needs, the way we think about the future, the the topics that we're interested in, everything has has not only changed, but it is changing like week to week, I think. Yeah. And so just the very idea that what our clients need, want and expect is is fluid, that the client experience needs to reflect that to me that's the most fundamental change that we've seen. We've got to be more responsive to how our clients are feeling right now. And how do you how do you suggest an advisor does that in a in an efficient way that is meaningful? Yeah. Well, I mean the efficiency is the challenge, right? I I think there's there's a number of different things that we can do. It, it, to me, again, it, it always comes back. And look, this is our world, this whole idea of how do we gather input from our clients in order to really evolve the experience. So I kind of live and breathe that. And it's, it's, it's always where I start. We can talk about just some of what we're seeing in terms of, of how the experience is evolving. But I think there's really three things that we can look at changing or enhancing right now. One is just the overall client experience. By that, I mean the fundamentals. How often do we meet? How do we hold meetings? Are we using social media? You know, just all of those kind of core elements of client experience. I think also that we need to change the conversations that we're having with clients and we need ways to ensure that what we're talking to them about as part of that review process is truly a reflection of what's on their mind at that moment. And then finally, I think we need to enhance the kind of communications and education that we provide. If I were to try to bucket it into three big, big ways that we can change, I would say those are the three. All right. I mean, those are, those are, three very heavy subjects, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we could talk, we Indeed. could have a podcast on each one of those. Exactly. So let's talk about the conversations. I'm really curious yeah. to pick your brain on that. The conversations that you're having, that was the, the second one that you mentioned. Yeah. I don't know if it's necessarily more in depth, but what they need at that moment, obviously we want to be able to fulfill that, mm -hmm. but how do we really truly 
get into the heads, as you said, of our client, or how does an advisor get into the head of their client to know what their needs are, even if they're not necessarily saying them out loud that moment? What do you think? Well, and and so that last point, I think, is is the really key part is I think advisors have done great work at having deep conversations and, and drawing out needs over time. But it's 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 not always easy for the client to articulate mm -hmm. how they're feeling. If the client can't articulate it, the advisor can't respond to it. We learned a lot about this through our industry research over the last year where we went out. We It, it was March of last year that we were in field with this and we saw this significant decline in what we were just calling client self-confidence, right? Mm -hmm. This this feeling of control, this feeling of, do I have a plan? Am I, you know, am I able to actually reach my goals? Those things weren't necessarily being articulated and yet such an important part of the conversation. We could imagine a client coming in for a review meeting and saying, hey, so how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, we're good. You know, it's tough <laughs> and the kids are at school, but you know, we're fine. You know, I always yeah. joke, it's what I tell my husband, right? Is, well, I'm fine. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Everything's fine. You know, <laughs> but it's, we know but better. it might not, but we, you know better. Exactly. It's, it's a, it's a real question. It's yeah. a legitimate response. So I think we just need to be better at kind of drawing out some of those things. So one of the ways that, that we've been doing this with advisors is by having them request clients complete, think of it like a poll in advance of a review meeting. This is right. sort of a big enhancement to our platform where, where you're, you're really just not saying how you're doing, but you're saying, how do you feel on these four statements? Or how, what's your level of concern with these three issues? Mm. Things that are easy for clients to respond to. And if you can take that input and use it to effectively co-create the client agenda, then I think you're going to have the deeper conversation. But if we're reliant on the how are you doing, is there anything else you want to discuss, uh, kind of high level platitudes, that's what you're going to mm -hmm. get back is platitudes, right? If we can find a much more robust way to say, tell me how you're feeling about these things and then use that to guide the conversation, I think we're going to have better conversations. Well, I love the fact that what you're doing by doing that in advance is you're capturing them at a neutral time right? They don't feel like they're put on, a, on the spot when yep. they're in front of you. It's just like you said, you know, I've, I've been married for a very long time, 26 years. Mm -hmm. So you've heard I'm fine. I, I've heard I'm fine. And I know yeah. I better figure out what's not fine or else I'm going to yeah. be in trouble. <laughs> but, but that's just it is that when we're in, in the moment, you, you spoke about emotion earlier, it, yeah. it is difficult to be able to put into words a lot of the things that you think and feel at that exact moment when you're face to face with someone. And we yeah. can't expect our clients to do any any better than we would do in, in those types of situations. So having that information sent ahead of time is so critical and so crucial, because they're, they can do it on their couch in their easy chair and the, you know, in the bathroom, I don't care where they fill out the form you're sending them. But it's yeah. at a very neutral time where they they feel like they can express that without any type of judgment, concern, embarrassment, whatever, that they may feel in a face-to-face -face meeting with you, whether it's Zoom yeah. or whether it's in, in an office. So that that is fantastic. Yeah, I, th I do think that we, we almost expect too much of our clients. It's not our client's job to figure out what needs to be discussed. Mm -hmm. It's not our client's job to tell an advisor what the client experience should be. I think it's the advisor's job to, to, to ask really smart questions yeah that tease out those needs and challenges and concerns and then figure out how to deliver from there. It's easier to say, well, tell me what you expect or tell me, you know, instead of how are you challenged or what are you feeling or what are you, but I, yeah, I think the whole idea of the neutrality of that situation and, and asking about much more specific things helps an advisor say, okay, I've got to lean in on this a little mm -hmm. bit and understand what's really going on. Julie, how much do you think the frequency of contact plays a part in this? I mean, we if somebody's having an annual review and they're, they're meeting their client once a year, sending this out, you know, a couple of weeks in advance, that that's a great step. But mm -hmm. how much client interaction should they be having throughout the year, do you think, mm -hmm. just to maintain a good, healthy relationship? Yeah, I mean, and I think this has changed a little 
If it's once a year, there's and there's limited contact in between. We can't pretend that's mm -hmm. a, a deep relationship. Uh, if it's a smaller client where there's not a lot of ongoing direct contact, then I think we need to find ways and technology makes this possible to to have a lot of outreach. I mean, it doesn't have to be a call, it doesn't have to be a meeting, but ways to to share relevant information throughout the year for sure. I do believe that the last year has increase the need for contact. And we've seen that. And in fact, I'd say there's two trends that are really driving us toward increased levels of contact. One is, is just what we've experienced. We used to ask clients as part of our surveys, you know, in a typical year, how often do you expect to meet your advisor? Well, there is no typical year right now. Yeah. We don't even know what that looks like. So it's now the window's shorter. In the next 12 months, how much? And maybe that's going to be different 12 months from now. Mm -hmm. The best we can hope to do is understand where they're, what they're feeling right now. So we have had a need for more support uh, just on the basis of uncertainty and anxiety. But the other thing that I think is, is actually going to take over from this, even as we move through the, the pandemic, is that younger clients tend to say they want more frequent contact. So there's there's a generational thing. Now, they're also much happier to do it online and in, in different ways. So it it all works out. But when we're doing the research, we're seeing them saying more frequent contact on average. So that's going to kick in as well. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm I'm curious to see, and I know that this has happened multiple times in the last two decades, where something catastrophic, if you will, has happened to the market. I, I, I'm always curious about how many people lose faith in their advisor, especially mm -hmm. because of lack of contact. And then all of a sudden they have this mindset of I can do it myself, which can be completely obviously detrimental. But how do we help advisors understand how their clients are feeling and keep that from happening, you know, whether it's looking for somebody else or feeling like I can do this on my own, because obviously my advisor just lost me 25% in the market or whatever. Right. There's two parts to that that I think are interesting. So one is obviously if, if, and if a client loses confidence and it's related to their plan or their mm -hmm. portfolio, then we better be on top of that. We better be demonstrating value and separating value from market performance and, and, and make that clear. Generally speaking, we find that when clients are deeply engaged, when they truly understand and in fact can articulate the value that an advisor provides, they tend to be engaged even in a down market, right? Because mm -hmm. they get the value. But the other connection that I thought was really interesting in, in the research that we did on confidence is if I'm not feeling confident, this has nothing to do necessarily with your level of service as an advisor, but if I'm not feeling confident about my financial future or I'm feeling out of control, that actually has a knock-on effect that decreases loyalty and satisfaction mm -hmm. and net promoter score and all of those other metrics. A client could sit there and say, no, I'm, you know, I'm happy with performance and I think you've provided good service. But the very fact that they're feeling anxiety could cause them to leave. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so we, that's, I think, where we, we've got to peel back the onion and, and really understand how they're feeling right now. And as an advisor, if you can help me improve in those areas, if you can help me feel greater certainty or greater control, I mean, that's the greatest gift you can give me, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not going anywhere yeah. if we can do that. It's more frequent contact, as you say. It's also asking better questions and really trying to get inside the heads of clients to understand where they're at. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm curious if your research touched on kind of the client, how they've they've transformed over this last year, year and a half with what their focus is. I mean, a lot of advisors, they feel like they know their client, they know what they're wanting to do. They, you know what, they just want to make sure they don't run out of money in retirement, or they want to make sure right. that they have some sort of legacy or blah, blah, blah. Yeah. All these other things that they identified in 2019, right? I mean, that, yeah. that's the bottom line. 2020 really changed people's ideas of what's important to them yeah, now, yeah. right? So how are you helping advisors figure that out? I mean, obviously, we're talking all about communication today, but what are some really good key tips that you can give them? 
How we find out comes back to, again, just whether it's gathering client input or asking better questions as mm -hmm. part of the review or in advance. I mean, I think there's sort of a, a tactical element of how we draw that information out. We, we asked qu a question of a group of advisors a while back, and it, uh, I'll paraphrase, but along the lines of, have you asked your clients if the pandemic has changed how they think about their financial future? And mm. it was fewer than half. And I wow. thought, uh, that should be 100%. That's, yeah, that's the, that's the first <laughs> question, that, right? <laughs> it, because we have changed, yeah. right? You, I, I cannot be convinced. I mean, not everybody, for sure, but... It has changed some of our values. It's changed what's important. It's changed the kind of experiences that we want to have. Again, helping clients actually articulate that is, is a huge value. Drawing that out. When, when we asked clients about, again, going back to, to almost a year ago now, when we asked them the topics they were interested in, mm -hmm. between just in the two weeks we were in field, March 10th to the 24th, the biggest changes, that is the biggest changes in people saying, I'm interested in this topic were health and wellness, second careers, charitable giving, managing stress. You know, it was, it's kind of like what people were talking about at the dinner table. Mm -hmm. It wasn't basic education on the markets. It wasn't even coping with a market downturn. It was more about my life. Simple questions that pinpoint what are the things your clients are interested in learning about right now, and then tying that to the way you communicate, you know, the kinds of education you deliver, the kinds of articles you send, or, or whatever it is that you do, I think is a really powerful and important process right now. Yeah, absolutely. Julie, th this has been a fantastic podcast so far. I've got just a couple other questions for you. Sure. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shift gears though a little bit. I'd like to look hear a little bit more about absolute engagement. What are your guys' plans over this next, you know, in 2021? What is your goal? We've learned a lot over the mm -hmm. last year as well. And our goal has, has always been consistent. It's about how do we help advisors use direct input from their clients to drive engagement and growth? That has not changed. But what has changed is how we work with advisors the questions that we need to ask clients have changed. The frequency with which we ask those questions has changed. The need for ongoing input has become a big priority, right? It's, it's not good enough to ask a, a client a set of questions, say on a survey, like if you're, if you're in our world, mm -hmm. and then three years later, <laughs> ask them. Yeah. It, it, a week later, it could be different. It's nuanced, but but our world is all about what do we need to understand from clients right now? And then how do we connect that to the conversations that advisors are having and 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 the experience that they're delivering? How do we connect the dots is, is sort of our big focus right now. Absolutely. Well, you provided me with a little bit of documentation before we ever started this podcast mm -hmm. today. And, and one of the documents you gave me was your comeback plan. How will yeah. your client experience need to evolve? Now, I, I understand that this is available to anybody who's listening to this podcast, correct? On our website, we have a, a resources page. So it's just absoluteengagement.com. And then there's a resources tag. You can actually go there. We've got a number of different things on there. And th that report that you're referring to is right on that page. You can download it. And what we did with that one actually is in, included in the report is an, a, a self-assessment. So if you want to go through and answer some questions about your client experience right now, it'll actually generate a report for you. So hopefully it'll not just be a report, but an actual tool that you can use maybe to trigger some conversations within your team. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much for offering that to the audience. I know that's uh, definitely value. If somebody wants to reach out to you, is there a way they can get a hold of you personally? Yeah, I, I mean, you can just email me directly, jlittlechild at absoluteengagement.com. We share all of our research and thinking through our blog, and that's another way to connect with us it's right on the website. Julie, thank you so much for your time today. This was a fantastic podcast full of great information for the listener, and I just appreciate your time. No, oh, thank you. Appreciate it. You bet. And my last thank you always goes to you, the listening audience. Thank you for tuning in and listening to the Breakthrough Advisor podcast. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. 
This way, when we come out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. This makes it much easier to share these podcasts with your colleagues. Again, thanks for listening today. For everyone at InsureMark, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Breakthrough Advisor podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of InsureMark. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. 